Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that I've been 3D printing and painting custom miniatures for the upcoming Marvel game called Crisis Protocol. The idea is to expand the game and add a bunch of fun custom content that everyone can use in fun, non-competitive games. The minis that Atomic Mass games have lined up look great, so I try to make characters that I know that aren't scheduled to come out. Plus, every hero and villain has multiple costumes and versions, so this opens up things quite a bit. I appreciate all the folks who posted videos of the demo games for the Crisis Protocol Gen Con booth that really gave great information about the game and what's to come. So this game isn't out yet, but the rules are available for free now. This gives us the basic rule set, but does not give us the character cards or mission cards. Plus, you'll need the other accessories for the games like the tokens, measuring sticks, etc. I plan to make a few videos of gameplay, and I reached out to Atomic Mass Games to get a few things like the mission rules and demo characters, but I haven't heard back yet. With the game about to release soon, it wouldn't be too long to start playing, but I'm anxious and impatient. Plus, I think it would be good for everyone to see the game in action. Anyways, I've been in the process of making rules for all the characters we've been making in the print and paint videos. So far I've made 11 characters, with another one coming soon. And I've made rules for all of them. These are still a work in progress, but at least that's a good foundation for these guys. These rules are all in an Excel document, which is nice and all, but this game uses character cards. So taking images of the character cards, I recreated a design so we can have a somewhat legit looking card to play with. Of course it isn't exact, but I think they will look good enough to be part of the game. Let's talk about the first character's rules that I have. I will also go through the card in details of all the stats and how they work. So here's the first character card I created. It's for Ant-Man. We will start at the top and work our way down. At the very top, we see his name, Ant-Man. Underneath that is his alter ego, Scott Lang. Why this is important is because you can't have multiple of the same heroes or villains in a game, unless they have different alter egos. So you couldn't play with multiple Peter Parkers, but you could have different Spider-Mans, like Miles or Gwen. Continuing down, next we have a bunch of icons and numbers. Starting to the left, we have an icon that looks like a heartbeat. This is the character's stamina. Stamina is basically the character's health, and shows how much damage a character can take before dazed, injured, or knocked out. For Ant-Man, he has four stamina, this seems to be kind of the default number for a regular human. Next is the double arrows that details the character's speed. There is short, medium, and long. For Ant-Man, he is medium, which shows as an M. You would see fast characters like Spider-Man get the long movement. Haven't seen too many that have been short yet, but there are statuses that can cause that. Movement is dictated using a measuring tool that can pivot at certain parts. Moving on, we have an icon that looks like a giant eye. This shows us the character's size. There are sizes from 1 to 5, 1 being like a trash can and 5 being a building. Kind of the default for a normal sized human is a 2. This plays a factor when moving over terrain and throwing items. Ant-Man may be a 2 now, but he has skills that can change that. And the last of the top icons is the threat level. When you start a game you select a mission, and that mission tells you how many points you can have in a game. So this threat level is basically points for your character. Ant-Man is a 3, which is fairly low. I would say Ant-Man isn't the strongest of the characters, but he could be a really good support. Now to the row underneath that. We see a red fist, a yellow spiral thing, and blue eye. This tells us a character's defense. The red fist is for physical, the yellow spiral is for energy, and the blue eye is for mystic. These are the three types of attack in the game. So characters have different defense against different type of attacks. The number tells us how many defense dice we roll when a character is attacked. So Ant-Man is pretty simple, he has 3's across the board. So when he's attacked, he would roll 3 defense dice. He has other powers that aid in that, but this is his basic stats. Now we get to start having a bit more fun. The first section is the orangey red boxes and they're for their basic attacks. Ant-Man has 3 attacks. First one is called Strike, and it's the default one that a lot of characters have. If you notice that there is a fist next to the name, that means that this attack is a physical attack. On the other side of the name is 3 icons. The first one, which looks like a crosshair, is Distance. Strike has a distance of 2, which again is a pretty default distance for a close combat physical attack. Attacks can have a distance of 1 to 5. Most attacks, I would say, have a range between 2 to 4. The icon next to that is a barbell and tells you the strength of the attack. This first attack has a strength of 4, which means when he uses this, he rolls 4 dice. And the last icon is the power cost. For this attack, it costs no power, but other stronger attacks will. Power is gained every turn, when you attack, and when you receive damage. Underneath the name are a few bullet points. 
these are special rules associated with this attack. This first one says that Ant-Man gains power to how much damage he deals. The claw marks means damage. So if Ant-Man attacks a character and did 2 damage, he receives 2 power. The next one is something I called Quantum Uppercut. Before the name, you see a little icon with a swirl on it. The dice used in this game have different icons for different outcomes, rather than using numbers. That swirly icon is wild on the dice. So when you roll a wild with this attack, this special rule kicks in. The rule for Quantum Uppercut is that the targeted character cannot count defense dice rolls as successes. That little shield icon is a defense roll on the dice. So if Ant-Man rolls a wild, then the opposing character can't count defense dice rolls as successful defense. I wrote this rule to kind of show how Ant-Man can shrink and grow very quickly, and can beat someone blocking them. Next we have a move called Insect Sting. This is a physical attack with a range of 3, strength of 4, and no power cost. The special rule for this adds a stagger effect when a wild is rolled. Stagger is a condition that a character has to use an action to shake this effect off prior to doing anything. So this basically removes an action from a character. Every character can use two actions in a turn. This is like move, attack, and superpowers, etc. This move shows how Ant-Man can talk to insects and command them to do things, like attack a character. I envision that Ant-Man calls a group of bees or wasps and sends them at the enemy. The last of the basic attacks is called Unseen Attack. It is a physical attack that has a range of 2, strength of 2, and 2 power costs. The cool thing about this attack is the defending character cannot roll defense dice against this attack. So it may have a low damage and a, not a lot of reach, but you can't defend against it. This was a show that Ant-Man can shrink very small, sneak up on an enemy, and quickly attack them unnoticing. So we have some fun, not too crazy basic attacks. He can cause Stagger, which is a big one, and has one that's unblockable, which is kind of cool too. Now let's go to Ant-Man's bread and butter superpowers. Superpowers can have three different types, active, reactive, and innate. Active means you use this power when it's a character's turn. Reactive means this superpower kicks in when some sort of event happens. Reactive powers can only be used once per turn. And the innate superpowers are inherent traits that are always on for the hero. There's also a leadership superpower, which Ant-Man doesn't have, but that gives you bonus to the entire team. Ant-Man has four superpowers. The first one is called Pim Particles. The icon of the left of name with the four arrows define it as an active power, meaning he has to use it when it's his turn. On the very right, we see the power icon and a power cost. Pim Particles has a cost of one power. Underneath the name shows us what this power can do. The first thing that says is action. This means that if he uses this superpower, he must use it as an action. Like I said before, heroes get two actions per turn. So if you use this one, you can only have one other action. Underneath action, it says to choose any character, even himself, or any train piece within range 3. Ant-Man can choose to grow that character or train piece to size 4, or shrink it to size 1. At the end of the turn, that character or train piece returns to their normal size characteristic. So for example, let's say it's Ant-Man's turn. He can move in a range to his teammate, and that's one action. Then he can use Pim Particles, his second action, and make his teammate large. Let's say Ant-Man's teammate is Captain America, and he's behind some size 3 train, and he can't quite reach the enemy to attack. Ant-Man can use this skill to make Captain America bigger, and Cap can just walk right over the train. Say Ant-Man's teammate is on his last legs, let's say Iron Man. Iron Man is size 2, and a train size 1 wouldn't help him to hide. If Ant-Man used Pym Particles and reduced him to size 1, Iron Man could hide right behind a smaller train piece. So this skill lets him manipulate sizes just like what he can do in the comics and movies. Next superpower is called Ride on Antony. I took this from the movie when Ant-Man rode on the flying ant and he called him Antony. This is another active skill with a power cost of 1, and it lets Ant-Man make a free move and use the ability Flight. Flight lets you go over large pieces of terrain which you wouldn't be able to, so the skill makes Ant-Man a little more mobile and can move around the battlefield pretty well. I wanted to make it like Ant-Man could pop in and pop out of situations so this lets him do it better. Next superpower is called Disappearing Act, and it's a reactive type. That's that little lightning bolt icon. And it has a power cost of two. It states that if he's attacked with a physical or energy attack, he can use this power, and attack dice used against him are reduced by three, to a minimum of one. So let's say Ultron attacks Ant-Man with his metallic fury attack. That one causes seven damage, meaning he rolls seven attack dice, plus it's a physical attack. When Ultron attacks Ant-Man, 
Ultron can only roll four dice versus the initial seven. This move is supposed to portray how Ant-Man can shrink in size quickly to avoid attacks. We saw a lot of that in the movies and it was pretty cool. And the last one has an infinity symbol that means it's an innate superpower. It's called hard to hit. Innate powers don't have a power cost as they're always an applying ability. Hard to hit states that Ant-Man can re-roll up to two failed defense or dodge rolls. Ant-Man is a difficult character to attack because he can change in size. So this tries to show this. Let's say Ultron attacks Ant-Man again with Metallic Fury. It's a strength 7 physical attack, and it causes a bunch of statuses if hit. Ant-Man uses his disappearing act so he gets Ultron to only roll 4 dice. Ultron rolls 4 dice and gets 2 hits and 2 misses. Ant-Man rolls his defense dice, which he gets 3 since his physical defense is 3, and gets 1 success and 2 fail. This power lets him re-roll those 2 fails, and on his re-roll he gets another success and 1 fail. Because of this, Ant-Man takes no damage. Ant-Man in general is more of a support type of character. His ability to survive and change sizes of characters and things could be pretty powerful. His attacks are fairly good, but he may not be the best frontline man. So the card I've been showing you is the character's card when he's healthy. In this game, you have two sides to a card. When a character has no more stamina, they become dazed and out for the remainder of the turn. At the end of the turn during the cleanup phase, you remove that token, the Daze token, and flip the card to the injured state. The injured side for most characters is no different. Some have different moves and stats, probably like Hulk, but we see a lot of the blue colors are now red and orange. Ant-Man is the same on both sides, so other than the visual color change, it's no different. But now, if Ant-Man loses all his stamina in an injured state, he becomes KO'd and is out of the game. So this is Ant-Man and the rules I created for him. We won't really know how balanced he is until the game comes out, but I think I kept his abilities in a realistic range. The main point with Ant-Man is to give him the ability to change sizes and utilize insects. I think he would be a fun character to play with and a fun support in the roster. He may not be the strongest or toughest character, but his ability to reroll and reduce attacks will help with his survivability. Let me know what your thoughts are about the rules. I'm always open to ideas or suggestions. Links to the character card images will be found below, so you can print and use them if you want. Since I made this first character card, and it took a while getting the right design, ones that follow should be quicker to make. I will also have another print and paint video soon, which I'm super excited about. Thank you to my patrons and supporters, and thank you for watching. I hope you're looking forward to this game as much as I am.